Hi, I'm Sabin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Small Signal Response of Flyback Converter by Behavioral Average Modeling. Links to papers and videos on average modeling of PWM converters are given in the YouTube page of this video. So you can just click them and get the information. I'm starting here with a piecewise representation of a basic flyback converter. This is a generic switch driven by a pulse source. We have a primary 33 millihenry secondary and then we have an output section with a load and a filter capacitor. I also added some ESR and this is the line voltage. Now the ratio here between the inductors uh, is such that the turns ratio is about uh, 57. Now this is coupled inductors and just for simplicity I'm assuming a coupling coefficient of 1. So this is the very basic representation of the switched circuit. Now we can use the concept of behavioral average modeling to build an average model of this circuit and as a matter of fact of any PWM converter. So this is just an example. You can do it exactly the same way for the back, for uh, boost, or forward, or any PWM-based converter. So I'm starting here with the inductor. I can use the primary or secondary that is reflected to the primary or reflected to the secondary. I'm just using here the primary. So here is the primary, and I'm starting with the average voltage on this primary. When the transistor is on, there is the input during the on. So the average voltage on this side, on this side, is VA over D on. And the average voltage on the other side, you might say, is N times, because of the reflection, VB, this is the voltage here, times D off. So this is a generic representation of a PWM converter inductor. Now to the output section. In this particular case, it could be a little bit different in other topologies, we have that the output is during the D off time, so therefore we see the inductor current times D off, this is the average output current, times N, which is the uh, turns ratio here of this uh, coupled inductor. Now this is strictly speaking correct for CCM now. I can represent this with average behavioral models. Average behavioral models are just voltage sources or current sources. This is a voltage source. The output of which, the numerical value of the output, is equal to the value of this expression at a given instant. That is, you can write here an expression, and the voltage here will be just the value of this expression as the simulation is running. So in this case, to get the average voltage here, I put the line, this is the input voltage, times VD on. Now D on is now coded into voltage. So this is the voltage of a node in the circuit, I'll show it in a minute, that represent the D on, the D on ratio. So this is the average voltage on the inductor on one side, and similarly we have the average voltage on the inductor on the other side, which is the output voltage, times 57, this is the turns ratio, times VD off, this is the off time. I've added two in uh, resistor, has, they have nothing to do with the model, this is just uh, in case I disconnect this so it'll not be open. So we have now this ABM, this is ABMI, this is the current source, the value of which now is IL, average current of the inductor, times 57, turns ratio, and VD off. There's another term here, which I'll talk about in a minute. This is uh, a correction for DCM. I will see it in a minute. So this is the basic structure of the, in this case, flyback, but very similarly, you can do it for any PWM converter. Now, what about DCM? discontinuous current mode. In this case, the current of the primary starts from zero and then goes to a certain value. 
and then the output sees this value actually reflected at the output and the current goes to zero. So we have an effective D off which is different from one minus D on. In fact, it's as shorter here. As it turns out, you can calculate this D off by this equation, which uh, says that uh, this D off is equal to two times average current and the inductance of the inductor switching frequency. VAB is the voltage across the inductor during the on time. This is then times the on minus the on. This is explained in the papers that I'm referencing. Uh, so this is the value of this D off. As it turns out, if you are in the CCM case, the, if you use this equation or calculate the value of this equation when you are in CCM, the number you will get will be larger than one minus the on. So if you take the minimum between this and this, in any event, CCM or DCM, you'll get the correct D off. That is, in CCM, you'll get this one because this is the smallest one. And in the uh, DCM, of course, you'll get this one, which is also the uh, smallest between the two. Then there is another correction that has to be made for the output. Because we are sampling the, out the current, you might say, at a shorter period, not one minus uh, D on, there is a need for the output source, output current source, divide, you have to divide it by D on plus D off. Of course, in CCM, this is one, so it's exactly what we've seen before, inductor current D off times N. But in DCM, you have to add this to correct for what just I've uh, explained. And again, if you like to get a more detailed explanation of what's going on here, uh, you're welcome to look up uh, the reference that I'm uh, citing in the uh, page of this uh, YouTube video. So now we have everything. We have the stage itself, this is the inductor, average voltage, output section, this is the current source for the output, and then I have here a ABM which represent the duty cycle, that is the voltage here represents the duty cycle. I have added an AC source for AC analysis. And this is T on, this is the on time. That is the driving force for this thing is the on time divided by 10 micro, which is the period of the switching, which I've chosen uh, 100 kilohertz. And then I have here the so-called duty cycle generator. It's another ABM, which is just minimum of these two, that is one minus V D on, etc. This is this expression that uh, we have seen before. Here it is minus V D on. And the output then uh, has this correction, V D off, V D on. So this model now is correct for both DCM and CCM. The beauty is that this model is co compatible with time domain transient DC analysis and AC analysis. You don't have to do anything more. That's it. You just run it in AC. What SPICE is doing, actually it's the core of SPICE, it's first linearizing the circuit, getting in fact a small signal of it. So this is transparent to the user. You don't see it because it's in the background. And then it's running the AC. So you don't have to do anything. You just have this large signal and the small signal derivation is done by a P-spice. So here's an example. I'm running here a time domain analysis, 10 milliseconds, and then also I've added a, a parameter switch and the parameter is the load resistor, three to 20 ohm, uh, in current of three ohm, this is covering both CCM here and at the end it's uh, DCM. And here's what we are getting. Now I'm showing here again a time domain. This is for the actual switched circuit. That is I'm running this circuit as well as this circuit together. So I see here the switched circuit very nicely. This is the primary current. I see it's uh, CCM and the secondary 
uh, current, that is the secondary inductor output. And then here we see the output voltages. Uh, this is for the, the ABM is the red one, the green is uh, for the switch. There is a slight difference between the two. The reason is that I have not trimmed the ABM model to the very last point. For example, uh, I have in the switched uh, case finite rise time, it's at 0.1 microsecond. Of course, a finite rise time and a fall time changes the effective duty cycle. I'm not taking this into account the ABM, so therefore there is a small difference, but all in all, it's, it's a very good match. Here we have the voltage on the switch, and here, very interesting, we see for the ABM, for the average model, we see D on, D on is the red, D off is the green, and this is the sum of these. Now in CCM, of course, the sum uh, should be one, because uh, D off is one minus D on. Now here is the R15 ohm, and this is now in uh, DCM. You can see it here that uh, the primary starts from zero, and the secondary goes to zero, Again, we have these two outputs, a slight mismatch between them. The voltage is different between, because the transfer function is different. This is the switch voltage. We see here the DCM operation. And here, very interesting, we see now the D on and D off for the DCM. Now the sum of these is not one because this is DCM and uh, D off is not a complementary of the on. So this is very neat. You can run very easily a DC sweep on say on T on and get V out as a function of T and this will be just the transfer function and this is done for say this is an example uh, input 325 and uh, a 3 ohm load resistor. This is CCM. Now the beauty of course is that you can run AC analysis and here I'm also using a parameter sweep in this case, I've chosen four uh, resistors. These two are CCM, these two are DCM. So let's see what's happening here. Well, here is the gain. Three and five are for the CCM, very typical of a PWM. This is the resonant point. We see here, actually, the effect of the right half plane zero plus the ESR of the capacitor uh, that I've added. And of course, we see also the phase, which is starting from zero and then goes about just about 180 degree or toward 180 degree. And the zeros are causing the phase lag to decrease. And then we have, very nicely, the DCM. It's very typical. It's about uh, 20 dB per decade. And this is the corresponding phase. Uh, obviously, the uh, phase here is uh, about 90 degrees, which is, of course, very typical of the DCM. Now, I can also see or probe into the effect of the input voltage, and here I am running the same thing for 125. See, here is the say, gain here. This is 125, and in the 325, see it's higher. This is the way it should be, of course. Now, let me just uh, emphasize that this is an average model, so uh, you have to be aware that if this is the switching frequency, it's like 100 kilohertz, and then obviously uh, this model is correct for uh, frequencies below, say, half the switching frequency, or maybe even lower than that. So you can't use it in this region because uh, this is just incorrect uh, due to the um, sampling uh, effect. So what about peak current mode? Well, I'm showing here now a boost converter and the point is that the transfer function between the gate, say the duty cycle here, and the output is really independent of the question whether it's a voltage mode or a current mode um, operation because this is just the stage itself. So we don't have to worry about this, it's the same thing here. What is different here is that the excitation is this V sub E, which is the output of the air amplifier or the voltage feedback. And so we are interested in the transfer function between this excitation and the output. 
Okay? So you might say that we have in between some transfer function that we have to take care of. I'll call it uh, the duty cycle generator. That is, you feed in a V and you get a duty cycle, and then you go on uh, with the stage itself, which is like we had it before. So what we are missing for peak current mode is this uh, duty cycle generator. Now, Professor, the late Professor Middleburg showed this equation, which is very nice, and this is a expression that you can use to calculate the duty cycle in peak current mode. This is the V sub E that I had. This is called controlled voltage, but uh, this is the V sub E I've had before. This is this voltage here. And this is the average inductor current. Ks is the sense resistor translating the current to voltage. Ts is the period of the switching frequency. Mc is the slope compensation to combat the subharmonic oscillation. Ks again is uh, this resistor. And M is the slope, that is the voltage on the inductor, uh, the rise of the current of the inductor due to the voltage across it during the on time. Okay, So we can now use an ABM to just calculate this duty cycle because uh, this is an expression, so we can plug this expression into this ABM. VE is the voltage, this is the, like the excitation here, which is composed of a DC plus some AC uh, perturbation. And so this is VE, this is the excitation voltage, and these are the other parameters of the Middlebrook equation, which I have everything. That is, MC is a constant, and um, this uh, uh, slope is this uh, line voltage divided by the inductance here. Okay, So I can very easily generate duty cycle. Once I have it, then it goes on as it is uh, for the basic uh, behavioral model of the PWM converter. So there is no difference here. The only difference is how do I generate the duty cycle. That's the only difference. And let's see the result. The model is strictly speaking correct for CCM because uh, this equation is for CCM. But I found that uh, it's actually pretty good for DCM also. So I've run here both CCM cases. This is 3 ohm and, and the 5 ohm. So this is the peak current mode response, this is the gain part for the CCM, and then 20 and 10 are for DCM. Now, I don't understand uh, this behavior here. This might be correct. I haven't probed into it, but it looks kind of different. Uh, it might be okay. Anyhow, the 20 ohm, that is also it's a deep DCM, seems, seems like logic, logical. So, in any event, for CCM, uh, this model is, is very, very good. And again, you see the drop of 20 dB per decade, as you expect, and then you have the effect of the zeros here, it's flattening it out. Again, this is incorrect for this region, uh, strictly speaking. Uh, you have to limit yourself uh, to this region uh, below half the switching frequency. So this brings me again to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it interesting and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.